Hello walkers, Mike here from Living Walks. So we thought we'd do a Levada walk for you. So we're going to start at Mont. In the distance in front of us, you can see the chaps who will be pushing the wicker baskets down the hill. This forms part of the walk from Mont to Camacha via the Levada dos Tornos. So if you wanted to walk the whole way through to Camacha, that'd be about 18 kilometers. Uh, we're going to do sort of half that. And we'll be ending the walk at the Jasmine Tea House. And then we'll show you where you can catch the bus going back in the 47. So to start the walk, you can come off in the cable car. We picked the 48 bus from the center of town. You can also catch the 22. Oh, a little bit of sun peeking out. If you look down Funchal Bay below us, the sun is shining. Of course, the elevation here is uh, a little different, so you want to check on the weather when you come up here. It's a little cloudy up here, but it's good walking weather. We've got a little bit of elevation to go later on. It does get a bit slippy. We'll show you some highlights. We'll show you where the path maybe diverges and which path to take. It's an interesting walk. So in front of us, you can see guys with baskets. Not many tourists up here at the moment. That will probably change depending on how many cruise ships are in the harbour. If you're wondering what the baskets run on, you can see the bottoms there. It's just wood. But you'd be surprised at the fair old speed you can pick up. I know it's very touristy, but it's quite fun to do that at least once. It's 25 euros if there's just one of you. Uh, 30 euros if there's two. The flags you see in front advertising Mont Japanese gardens really as I like to think of them. I've done a walk through them. I'm not into gardens particularly. They really are actually quite lovely. Entrance fee, in case you're curious, uh, 12 euros 50. And up ahead, cable car. And this is the one that you pick up down on the seafront, down in Funchal. As is tradition, I know some of you are curious about what I'm wearing today. So I'm wearing practical shoes. You know, we are hiking. So I have accessorized them with uh, leopard skin underpants. I've got a lovely uh, bronze metallic uh, t-shirt. Goes over the top. Decided to forego the uh, usual tricorn hat today. This is a nice place. A nice balcony around the back. 
especially if it's uh, warm up here. Lovely place, they do nice cakes. I know, I shouldn't entice you. So here you can get the bus number 22 and it's here if you're going over to botanical gardens that you can get the ticket for the cable car So we'll be passing the other cable car in a moment, the other station for the cable car. If you're interested in seeing what the Botanical Gardens looks like, go and have a look on our channel. You'll see a video taking you through. These aren't the only two Delarificals on the island. There's a couple more. There's one just past Cabo Girau. It takes you down to a little secluded beach. And it's a beach area that's only accessible by boat or a little cable car. And there's a lovely little restaurant there. And they grow all the local produce and that's what they cook down there. Uh, Faja dos Padres, I believe it's called. I'm sure someone can pick up my uh, poorly pronounced Portuguese. I think there's a couple of others around the island. These are the big ones though.
Now to continue on the walk, which is, which is what we are doing, we're going to come down here. Again, you can see it's all cobbled, so if it's been raining, you should have got good shoes on. Probably also I'd be, be inclined to give it a day or two to dry out. Be a bit more enjoyable. Wave to the people. A little cable car. They didn't wave back, strangely. There's a mysterious haunting figure perched on the corner there. Some apparition. Or it might just be Yvonne. Maybe looking out to sea, thinking wistfully about life and the universe. Or she may just be contemplating what she's going to have for lunch. Someone asked this in a previous comment, uh, what sort of bear spray is best to bring with you on these walks. In spite of the legends, there are no bears on the island. Although, it depends if you count Mad Jose. So hopefully you won't encounter Mad Jose. Uh, you'll know if it's him. From a distance he'll look like a bear, but when you get close you'll be able to tell pretty much it's just a carpet he's wearing and he's cut some holes in for arms and legs. He's quite harmless really. I could almost believe this was a scene from one of the Hobbit films. Except, of course, with less CGI going on and also less story padding. We won't dwell on that, will we? You can come up here and there's another little turn off which will take you down to the right. It's a different walk. I don't think it goes on a Levada. I don't remember having done it. I seem to remember it's a bit more scrabbly. It takes you downhill. I say we're going to go up onto the uh, Levada. We're probably not halfway up a little ascent, but this is the little. Uh, side trip I was talking about. See at the minute they fenced it off. You can see where that takes you down. Three kilometers down towards the sea. That's where we're heading, in that direction anyway. And it's up. Worth mentioning, you didn't know already, you saw someone earlier taking a few selfies. That's all great. If you go out with a guide though, they will tell you, if you're going to take a picture, stand still first. Don't walk and take a photo. It's different what I'm doing because I'm not actually looking at the screen. I'm just looking straight ahead. But here's a little fun fact. There's a lot of sheer drops on the island on the walks which kind of makes it entertaining. Little frisson of risk in our otherwise sanitized world. But it also means that every year 
a few people disappear. What that means is basically they've probably gone out on their own, maybe stopped to take a photo, disappeared off the edge. And of course, you can imagine, quite difficult getting rescue teams out here. So, if you're going out walking on your own, uh, let someone know where you're going. And don't take selfies if you're walking. So 35 minutes into the walk. Uh, still climbing, but not far to go. I just thought I'd pause here, because through the trees, get a little glimpse of Franchal. Sunny down there, 23, 24. Up here, I think the forecast said about 17. I don't know if you can see over there, in the distance, there's Mont. There's a little church. There's the big cable car station to take you down to Fonchal. But we, as I say, are continuing to go upwards. few words maybe about the trees around us so we've got a lovely actually little walk we did a, a walk with uh, Elio or Elvis as he likes to be known a local tour guide and if you want to look at that video he takes us through and sort of identifies some of the plants around us and he talks about the history of the Levadas so I might touch on those later on but right now Looking around us, the cacti, a lot of eucalyptus trees up here, we did further back anyway, you can really smell them up here, and of course laurel silver, there's only a few laurel silver forests in the world, one of the biggest ones is here, go and check out our video, Elio will describe that a bit more eloquently than I. So we're about 40 minutes into the walk. We're nearly at the top of our ascent. We'll look down there. Bathed in sunshine. Glorious from Shell. 24 degrees down there, you know. Up here, it's about 17. Look over there. Actually, you can see See both cable cars, uh, one on the right, it's the one that takes you to Botanical Gardens, and the one ahead next to the sort of Austrian looking building. That's the one that takes you down into Funchal. Glorious Funchal, from near the start of Lovado dos Tornos. So we're just a minute on from that lookout point and we're here. Corral dos Romeros. Romeros. There's a little bus stop here which is 29. So you can take this down to Franchal. You might be wondering where's the Levada start? Well, first of all, there are handy signs. Levada dos Tornos is pointing this way. And you can take either of these two roads ahead of us. We're going to take the one to the right. So there's a couple of ways of finding your way around. When we first came, we used to use the sunflower guides. Oh, really good books, detailed descriptions of buses, where to turn, 
etc. But now, in the modern age, find all trails, which is an app you can find on Google Play or the Apple Store. Very handy. Much better than Google Maps. Oh. The reason is, is because it's got all the Levadas marked on it. Now the full thing is a paid app. What that allows you to do is download some of the maps. But to be honest, if you've got phone connection, which we have at the moment, you can just get by with the free version. friendly neighborhood goat. Hello. Just had to check for a moment, make sure that wasn't Zhao, the goat in disguise. Friend of Jose. Hello chaps. Same to you. So sign reminding us Lavado dos Tornos and the road to Camacha is up. If you go down that corner, you just get to a corner and there's a bus stop again for the 29. And look, just in case you miss it, there's a little painted sign, Levada. So because it's not just the locals being helpful, probably also do get fed up after a while of people just stumbling on their land. So we're actually on the Levada now. Look at my feet, you wouldn't know it. That's because when we go through urban areas, Hello. I'll talk about that in a moment. Yeah, when we go through urban areas, they tend to be covered with concrete panels. But here we are on the Levada. So what was that little stall back there? Well, simply locals are selling some of their excess produce, buy some little bananas there, very trusting. Put your 50 cents in the pot and grab a banana. I hear the goats in the background. Hopefully they haven't cornered Yvonne or the other way around. Hopefully Yvonne hasn't cornered the goats. Nice and moist. So there are several thousand kilometers of Levadas on the island. The original purpose was to bring water 
from the wetter side of the island, from the north, all around the island. And of course, they serve a purpose to irrigate, irrigate farms, they bring fresh water to drink. And of course, uh, Madeira generates, I think it's something like 11% of its energy through hydroelectricity. Let's wander on, see what we can find. Stay with us to the end. So we're now an hour in. We're getting a little peckish. So I put an order in to Deliveroo. It did say they'd be able to meet us up here. And it's about time. While we're waiting for them to turn up, if you do these Levada walks, you'll often find, you think, oh, did I see some movement down in the water channel? Well, sometimes you do. What is it that you see? Well, believe it or not, sometimes you'll see trout. So the trout have been uh, released. And there, uh, you can't catch them, not allowed. Oh, here we are. I think this is a Deliveroo people just on time. So we might have to stop here for a moment while we enjoy our banquet. Well, that was a spectacular lunch. Thank you, Deliveroo baked cod and typical Canarian bread absolutely lovely these blue flowers around us agapanthus We've got some at home in the garden. It may sound like I'm a horticultural expert. Alas, no. If uh, you knew me well, you'd realise I almost have a blindness to uh, plant names. No, it's just that I've never been that interested. But being on these walks, listen to great guides like Elio, I do pick a few things up. What's the one doing? She sees no ships. Sometimes it's quite difficult to get a sense. So you can see the uh, delivery people going over there onto their next trip. You get a sense of how high up we are. Most of the time it doesn't feel that way. I mean here, for instance, it doesn't feel particularly vertiginous, does it? Because we've got all the greenery to our right. So that gives us a false impression. Sort of hides the fall. And there's a lot of greenery here, a lot of trees. Because it would do, because the name of the island, Madeira, means wood in Portuguese. So when it was found, of course it was a great source of wood for building. I believe the eucalyptus trees were sort of introduced here because they were fast growing, but apparently that's not worked out too well. I don't know if eucalyptus trees are particularly good for building, but also don't they burn very easily? Hmm.
So we're an hour and a half in. A little bit of bird song. A little bit of scenery on cue. See the clouds rolling in. Thank you very much. Still see Mont. I can see it just through those two trees there. So it can feel like uh, quite a long walk, but it's just simply because we're following the terrain, which in geological terms, uh, we like to describe it as a bit in outy Another little peak. A bit of sun on the side there. So hopefully when we get round this corner, we'll have a little bit of sun. Cockerels in the distance. So you've got a quite a way to go yet. And we are just sauntering, by the way. We're not speeding this through. I'm sure seasoned hikers like yourselves might do this much quicker. We are being leisurely. We are enjoying the view. And of course, we're filming. We're stopping to film now and again. Again, got that lovely sunny view over to the right there. It really is remarkably fresh up here and the smell of eucalyptus is really strong. If your head is a little muzzy, if your nose is a little blocked, get yourself up here amongst the uh, eucalyptus trees do wonders for you. So we're just a few minutes on. Just before we get to this gate, and we've got lots of lovely nasturtiums lining the bank here. I'm going to leave Yvonne here to graze here for a while. She likes to forage. If you haven't tried a nasturtium, it tastes quite mustardy. Some people love them. They're okay, nice and solid. This place here is called Chupana Hills. Now they ask you to stay on the path here because it's a, it's a resort and a spa. Having said that, it's looking a little overgrown at the moment. Let's see what we see. Certainly when we've been here before, there's been a few people out. I think it's pitched as, you know, quite, quite select, quite expensive. See some of the buildings along here on the left and some to the right. Don't see many people out there. course is one of the landmarks to remind you that you are on the right path. Although let's face it there's not too many Levadas along here so you shouldn't really get lost.
when we first used to do this walk, it used to be known as the uh, tea shop walk. That's how people used to know it, because there were a grand total of two tea shops at the end. There was the Hortensia Tea Gardens, and then there's the Jasmine Tea Gardens or Tea House right at the end, which is where we'll be turning off. The Hortensia, last time we were along here, uh, closed, I guess, during the pandemic, and it's yet to be uh, sold. Chupana Hills, private property, do not deviate from the Levada. Well, wow. mm. see, are you welcoming? Hopefully if you come to stay, there'll be a little bit more welcoming to the guests. I'm sure they will be, I'm sure they will. A lot of shells of buildings. About one hour forty in. Come across some houses. Quite handily, I've noticed that my memory card is filling up. So I have hmm, about two minutes left, so I'm going to take this opportunity just at the end of this path to swap the cards out. Fear not, you will notice no difference. Oh, I see some chickens. And a dog squeezed itself into the doorway there. Very nice. And look, just a little reminder, days gone past, 40 minutes more to the Hortensia Gardens, 40 minutes to the Jasmine Tea House, complete with opening times. So, we've got another 40 minutes to go. Let's get cracking. So we're just under three hours. A little reservoir here. I'm guessing from the farms below. And it's being fed from this sluice up here. There's a little grill, if you can see it, probably just to keep all the leaves out. Too much you can say about a sluice really is there. I mean as sluices go it's quite nice. But then what would a bad sluice look like? Hmm. Let's continue on. We have a little bit of ooh, a break in the greenery ahead. Just keep recording, see if there's a spectacular view. It's 
a little bit of blue sky. Right, well, it's a very steep road. I'll tell you that. If you get an impression from here, but it's uh, oh, my word, wouldn't like to be cycling down that. We have got Funchal just peeking through at the bottom there. Let's carry on. We've got Yvonne up ahead, leading the way. Like an expert mountaineer. Come across this deserted home. It's quite interesting how they've expanded it. Maybe it started off with just that house in the background, just a few rooms, and over time, built a little bit on the side, a little bit on the front. Got some fencing on here to keep people out, or animals. And I'm wondering then also, perhaps they would have farmed this land in front of us. So farming on the island uh, has been dwindling as it's just a lot easier to import food. And of course, if you're young, the idea of tilling the soil, and it's hard work here, maybe is not as appealing as going to the mainland, getting a nice tech job, or working in tourism. I can imagine here also that this is where they might have sold their goods. So again, bananas, anything else they grew here. I'm wondering whether to take my sunglasses off. Um, let me just check, hang on, how's it for you? So sunglasses off, sunglasses on, which do you prefer? Should I do it again, just to check? Sunglasses off and on. Okay, I, I, think, it's a, I think it's an off moment, isn't it? Yeah, well, if you don't mind, I'll leave them off, there you go. So at 2 hours 20, these weird trees to our right. We've got another empty building to the left, although it's got glass in some of the windows. And actually, you can see that someone's come along with a strimmer and cutting things back, so who knows? Maybe it's gone back into a family's hands, someone's going to move in. And down below too, looks like some of the terraces here have also been cleared with strimmer. So yeah, perhaps someone's moving in. Seems a nice location. A few terraces here that you could grow something on. Well, who knows what stories that house has to tell? Who knows what stories it will tell in the future? The sun is blinding on the sea, 
but I'll try to uh, adjust the view. So maybe, just maybe, you might be able to see again. See, we're still in view. That's better, isn't it? Yes, that's better. So we're still in view of one shell. Gleaming away there. Jay's been tea house, 15 minutes walk. Oh. So that might sound like a dog, by the way. I happen to know it's Yvonne. So one of her many talents that she doesn't like to advertise particularly. Is the fact that she has the gift of mimicry. And not just animals, objects too. In fact, sometimes if she creeps up ahead, you never quite know if she's going to pop out. I mean, that looks like a car parked over there, but I wouldn't be surprised. Let's carry on. So we should be close to the Hortensia tea gardens uh, now closed as I said might still be up for sale oh now look at that view you can't say we don't treat you here on live and walks good sound of Von barking in the distance got buses birds tweeting on electrical cables. What a lovely sight. Lovely sight too in their natural element. Some uh, cars dumped. Looking for all the world like a couple of cows grazing in a field. Actually, they look really cool. Are they uh, ambassadors? Very curvy. So they're not modern cars. Let's have a look when we get a bit closer. Oh, this is nice, isn't it? See the flowers on the left. And you see what I mean, don't you, by uh, cars down below. Lovely curved shapes. Anyone know the make? They look almost majestic, don't they? Don't think they're going anywhere though. And I'm wondering if, in fact, ah yes. So this is actually, well not the spilled and just on the left, but a little bit further. Everyone's trying to gate. Let's see Hortensia tea gardens. And there's a for sale sign there. So I'm guessing one of the One of the victims of uh, the COVID epidemic, I think. We've stopped here a few times over the years in the past. Lovely views. The gardens are quite lovely. Even if, like me, you're not really into gardens. It's for sale. There's a number. You might see an opportunity there. Again, just as we continue on, nearly at the end, there is front shawl glistening away. Let's carry on. Here 
at 235. Just spotted this hanging from a tree here. I'm guessing because of the little tag. I wonder if it's something to monitor the number of insects. Maybe they get caught and trapped in the bottom. I don't know. If anyone knows the answer, do let us know. But beyond that, until we're nearly here, got this uh, big building over on the right. So it may feel like we're miles and miles away from anywhere, but actually, right about now, this Levada is sort of more or less parallel to one of the main roads, the ER201. So if you found, of course, that you want to do this walk and want to get picked up at the end rather than take the bus, you can direct someone to follow the ER201. Until the Jasmine Tea Garden. Nice handrails here. Oh, and it's a restaurant. Would you know? And so finally, after a gentle saunter of about two hours 40 in our case, again, I'm sure you could knock probably 40 minutes off that. We've come to the sign, for the Jasmine Tea House. So let's head down. So we'll show you where to get the bus back. But I think we might just uh, put a head in first, show you what it's like. Hello. Hello. Do you mind if we have a little look around? No, not at all. Lovely. Okay. Go on through. So stop here for a well-earned rest. And we'll show you where the bus stop is for afterwards. Thanks okay. very much. Lovely. Well, I know you've been before and I know you're going to go and get the bus this time, so we'll see you next time. Lovely. Merry Thanks, Nick, and yourself. Bye. Bye-bye now. So that's Nick, the owner. Uh, interesting little story. We have something in common. Uh, Nick used to run a little hotel uh, in Harwich. And we stopped there once or twice before, because in Harwich, you may or may not know, they have a sea shanty festival. Sea shanty festival, basically people dressing up as pirates and coming from all over the world. In fact, not just from Britain, a lot of people from uh, the Netherlands come over and it will dress up, enter into the spirit of things, lots of sea shanties, lots of good fun. And the, uh, yes, the little hotel they used to run, used to host uh, 
some of those evenings. So, and here, directly opposite them, this is where you can get the bus. It's going to get the 47. You want to catch it on this side, so that'll take you down to Funchal. show you the timetable. If for any reason you find that you've missed the bus, you've got a long wait ahead of you. Uh, if you've got Google Maps on your phone, do check Google Maps because probably only a few hundred yards from here, you may have to navigate down the road but you will find another couple of bus stops and you've got a few more alternatives to take. So you can check that out on Google Maps. But for now, well, I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you come and give this a try if you haven't tried this already. And from us here, and from Shell, we might bid you adieu. Oh, before we go, a little, little extra. I didn't show you. Let's get down here to the curve. Hopefully I can uh, see it over the edge. No, it's not that big building. That's not what I'm showing you. Stay with me. Stay with me. Right, and I don't know if you can see it just over there. You see some flat greenery. So there's Palero Golf. There's a golf course there. And also, I think just between us and the golf course, there is also a private gardens called Palero Gardens. I have it on good authority. They're extremely good. I haven't seen them again. Not particularly into gardens myself, but you might be. And so, till next time, take it easy.